Hey everybody, it's Eric. So, I finally got a shell prompt that I really like, and I just kind of wanted to share with you guys how to set it up. So, if you're a developer, you're probably going to be working in the terminal a lot, and you want a shell prompt that looks good and also has some useful information. Like maybe if you're working on a project with Git, it'll display your Git branch and like untracked files that you need. And so, it's nice to have this right here with all the information that you need. So I recently set it up with power level 10K, which is a theme for your command prompt with Z shell. And I really like it because it's really customizable. As you can see, you got all these different styles right here. You can throw a whole bunch of add-ons in it, like things that you never even know that you wanted in your shell. I have a pretty minimal setup right here, but you can definitely pimp it out with a lot more stuff than what I have here. So I'll show you some of the, some more of the features later. A lot of the features are really cool, but I first just wanted to go through how to install it. So if you don't already have Z Shell, you need to get Z Shell first. If you're on Mac OS on the latest update, like Z Shell is already the default shell, so you don't really need anything, but maybe you're on Linux or on Windows subsystem for Linux or something. And so you can usually find it just in your package manager so for Arch, you do Pac-Man, capital S, ZSH. If you're on Ubuntu or something else, you can use your package manager. And then what you want to do is to switch to the shell, you want to do change shell, dash S, that'll select the shell, and the path to the shell. So user slash bin slash Z shell. It'll prompt you for your password, and then you're in Z shell. Okay, now the, now the default Z shell now the default Z shell theme does not look very good at all, so I'll just show you real quick. So this is how it looks by default. It's just like a, just like your host name with a little percent sign. So I wanted to make it a little bit better. So what you can do. So let me just put this back for a second. So in order to install power level 10k. You want to go to the GitHub. You can just search for Power Level 10K. And this is actually a fork of Power Level 9K before. It was another Z shell theme that came before, but this is a fork because Power Level 9K is not supported anymore, it's depreciated. So, what you can do is install it. You can install it with Oh My ZSH, but personally, I don't use Oh My ZSH because you don't really need it. But you do the you do the same thing if you had all my ZSH right here. So what you want to do to install Power Level 10K is just copy this command here, and then this is going to basically install it to this directory right here, uh, home slash Power Level 10K. Personally, I don't want it there, so I'm going to change this to dot config slash ZSH slash Power Level 10K and then change this as well to .config slash csh. I mean, you can put it anywhere you want, but I just don't like having my home folder cluttered. So this little echo line right here is basically putting source power level 10K into your zshrc. Okay, so I've already done that. I already have it installed. But basically, whenever you get that installed, uh, the first time you log into your new Z shell, like in order to activate it, you'll have to run ZSH again. So let's restart it with ZSH. And then it's going to kind of guide you through how to set it up and install it. Uh, if it doesn't come up by itself, I already have it installed. You can just do P10K configure. And so it'll take you through this little installer right here. Now, in order to get like the full potential of power level 10k you need to have a good font installed so basically you just need the only thing really required is the line with power power line symbols so what that is is it's just these little symbols right here so it can display the correct and you basically just need that to like display the correct characters so you don't get any weird characters in your terminal. But what I recommend is actually installing a nerd font. So nerd fonts, you can look it up and install it from GitHub. Nerd fonts are basically uh, 
programmer fonts or like monospace fonts with a whole bunch of extra things added. So in addition to like the normal monospace characters, you get powerline symbols, font awesome, weather icons, Linux, Linux operating system icons, material design icons. So it's just like really pimped out fonts with all the icons you could ever need. And if you want, you can, with power level 10K, you can add a bunch of icons to it. Like you can add the GitHub logo here, like your operating system logo and a whole bunch of stuff. So if you don't have a nerd font with all of these icons, then you're not gonna be able to enable all the icons. But yeah, like I said, the bare minimum is powerline symbols. So your, your, your font just needs to be able to display these. And it'll kind of walk you through this to see if your font is compatible. But if you want my recommendation, I would just install your favorite nerd font. So install your favorite font with the nerd font extensions. So basically what you can do is there's a whole bunch of installation instructions down here. If you're, if you're on Mac, you can download it with Homebrew. You can install it with the installer script. So I have Fira code nerd font. That's what I'm using for this. So I'm able to see all these. So it's going to ask you if this looks correct to you. Yes, it looks like a diamond. Yes, this looks like a lock. Yes, this looks like a Debian logo. Do all these icons fit between the crosses? No, some of them overlap. And so basically it'll tailor your customization to whatever font you have. So that's the purpose of that. And so you can make your prompt look however you want. You got a whole bunch of different styles. I like the lean style. I, I, I don't need that much stuff in my terminal. So I'm gonna push lean, Unicode, 256 colors, so we get all the colors. Show current time. You can also show the current time in the terminal, but I really have no use for that, so I'm gonna say no. One line or two lines for your prompt. Again, I don't really see any point in doing two lines. I like it as one line, so I'm just going to put it as that. You can have them compact or spaced apart. I like mine compact. You can have icons or not. I don't really care for the icons. It just looks kind of messy in my opinion. So I'm going to go with that, but it's up to you. Concise or fluent, like if you want all this, took five seconds on just a bunch of things to make it more readable, but that's okay for me. I'll do concise. And you can enable transient prompt, which will basically only show the full prompt on your latest command. All the old ones will, get, will have it disappear. That's okay for me. I like to have all of them, so I'm gonna push no. And instant prompt is another nice feature about power level 10K. So if your, if your Z shell is really slow to start up, or like you have Oh my ZSH install with a whole bunch of plugins and stuff, and every time you open your terminal, you gotta wait like a second or two for ZSH to load. Then instant prompt mode is what you want to check out. So I don't actually have any problem with this, so I don't really need it. Like uh, this is basically only a problem if yeah, you can test it out by typing in ZSH, and if it takes a long time to pull up, then you have a problem. But I don't use Oh my ZSH. I only had like lagging issues whenever I had all my ZSH and I don't really use that anymore so I don't have a problem with it so but it, it is nice so instant prompt it'll basically just like make it load faster for you so if it has a bunch of stuff so if you have a whole bunch of plugins then it'll just appear instantly instead of having to wait for it so so I just enable this just because it looks nice. So I just enable this just because. And you can have it uh, off, quiet, so it doesn't print any warnings whenever it's starting up, or verbose. So basically if you, just, if you enable verbose, if any errors with your Z shell configuration pop up, then it'll show you. So it's nice to be aware of Z shell issues that might be coming up, so I'm gonna push verbose. And then it's gonna it's gonna write your file to home.p10k.zsh, and I already have it there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, or I'll overwrite it right now, 
because it's basically the same setup that I have right now. So it makes your config at p10k.zsh. And so basically it's keeping like all, all of this, all, all of these config options out of your Z shell configuration. So that's nice. So you don't have a ton of things cluttering up your Z shell. Basically what it does is it just adds the power level 10K instant prompt to the top so it loads faster. And then at the bottom here, it just uh, sources p10k.zsh. So it basically just keeps all the configuration options in a different file so you don't have it cluttering up your zshrc. So I'm gonna exit out of that. And if you want to like do more nitty gritty configurations, like maybe that's not exactly how you wanted yours to look, you can open up p10k.zsh with your favorite text editor. So this is your p10k configuration file, and it's pretty long, it's got a whole bunch of lines of code, but most of it's just commented out. Uh, there are a lot of more options in here, like if you want to change some things, you can go through it, but I mean, it's not really the easiest to just read through. So if you really want to make some more changes, you're just gonna to want to come to the GitHub page, and it has a pretty good guide on how to customize everything how you want. Like, for example, if you wanted to change it so that uh, your username and host name always appear here, you, you can do that pretty easily. You can just, uh, here. It has like an FAQ of all like the frequently asked questions. So basically you just search for this inside your, inside your power level 10K configuration and just add this one line. It's pretty easy to change if you really need anything. But the thing I like about Power Level 10K is just that the default configuration is so nice you don't really need to change anything if you don't need to. So some other features, obviously I have this pretty minimal, but you can also add some other features. Uh, here's a full list of everything that you can add to your prompt. So you can make it look like this if you really wanted to. I have no idea why, why in the world you want to do that, but that option is available if you want it. So we can also display the Node version, like the Ruby version, if you're doing some programming and you want to see which version of Node you're on or something like that, you can add that. It'll only display whenever it's in a relevant folder. So for example, I'm not seeing any uh, Git options here because I'm not in a Git folder, but if I CD into my website folder, then the Git pops up. So it says it's on master and if you make a new file, say touch new file, then it's gonna like show a little icon here that we have like one uncommitted, unadded file here. And just by playing around with it, you'll get, you'll get used to the icons that it has. It becomes pretty self-explanatory after you've used it for a little while. So that's nice to have. And you can add your OS icon. You can add the current time. You can add the version of all these different uh, programming languages. You can get the version of them. And you can get a whole bunch of other things. You can see if you're connected to NordVPN or something. So it basically has everything that you could possibly need if you really wanted to pimp yours out. But that's pretty much all that I did. Like, I didn't need it to do everything and the kitchen sink so that's pretty much good for me so i'm pretty happy with this new prompt that i have it's useful it looks good and you can set it up pretty easily so if that was useful leave the video a like subscribe or something like that i'll keep putting out more tutorials like this so let me know what you're interested in all right take care bye